Happy Canada Day, or is it? Why are we still celebrating such things while experiencing so much advancement in society that we actually have a prime minister arguing that Canada is one of the first post-national states? An idea. You can escape. Ideas are bulletproof. Hello everyone, welcome back to A Life Learn. My name is Becca and today I want to talk to you about nationalism, how it's developed through history, where it stands as a concept in current times, and how your perception of it can have a huge impact on where humanity takes it from here. Now for those who are familiar with the basic history of nation states, you'll know that nationalism is actually a rather new concept in human history. Since the beginning of agricultural times, most of human history has actually consisted of kingdoms and empires with borders that were constantly in flux as different powers fought for resources. It was actually only a couple centuries ago that nations started to develop in different areas around the world, but ultimately it was the defeat of the Nazi Empire within Germany during World War II that proved the cycle of empires rising up over developed states had truly ceased to be the reigning paradigm. And though some argue that the development of many of these nations has been organic via cultural and historical similarities among the population, there have actually been many changes to the borders of smaller nations as larger powers have chosen to bring together Together, different ethnocultural groups, sometimes leading to terrible genocides, wars, and mass death as these groups then fought for independence. So in this way, it's clear that nationalism has grown out of and continues to thrive on concepts of conflict. It's a way of grouping people together that tends to support the division of the human race into competing states and is based on people defining themselves specifically by who they aren't. But this sense of opposition was very effective in creating a social glue that increased the sense of unity and loyalty within larger nations as they first developed. Thus, things like forced conscription and national symbolic elements like anthems, flags, and military heroes were used to reinforce the political homogeneity governments were trying to achieve among the population they controlled. Though as technology continued to advance, so too did international trade, and thus international relations. And with this, things like multinational corporations began to develop, greatly increasing global economic interdependence. Many advances in science, technology, and medicine are accredited to these ever-increasing global connections, as is the exponential growth of the human population as well. Trade has grown to nearly half of the world's GDP, and a person's ability to access and learn about other cultures has never been greater, with immigration on the rise in many areas. Thus, our existence as a global community has constantly been growing, but despite this, there are still many people who hold a great deal of value in carrying pride for the country they were born in. And though this really isn't surprising, considering the patriotism or national pride that is still being indoctrinated into our everyday lives, again through the nationalistic symbolism I mentioned previously, as well as via being taught a sterilized version of history in public education, this sense of pride has actually become rather counterproductive to advancements in human society as it works against our sense of global community. But despite this, multinational corporations continue to encourage and reinforce many aspects of nationalism solely for the purpose of capital gain. Overconsumption of unnecessary products, some of which for patriotic purposes, is an activity that has been encouraged by corporations basically since their origination, and Canada's 150 year celebration is no exception to this. Everywhere I look there are products with some kind of Canada Day or Canada 150 slogan on them, offering people discounts in the name of the country or some special offer that ends July 1st. And in this way, the government and corporations are working together to maintain this old social glue, with about a half a billion dollars being invested in Canada's celebrations nationwide. But like the sales of most all products, these corporations are really only concerned with the sale of the product itself, not with any national values or meaning that may be behind it. And likewise, these entities are creating mass amounts of waste and pollution through their various different means of production, but showing little to no concern for the resulting impact on the environment as they continue on with their push for ever-growing profits. So considering how these multinational corporations have proven to have grown well beyond on the interest or influence of any one nation alone, it seems clear that they've become a global issue that, much like climate change, needs to be addressed on a global scale. But as celebrations like Canada Day go on, people are still being encouraged to build their identity based on the limited scope of only one area in the world, where they were born, when what we need is encouragement to see ourselves on a broader, more global scale, not just as Canadians, but as human beings. As society continues to advance, nationalism is continuing 
to become more and more just a matter of perspective. And despite one's ability to find differences among people throughout the world, ultimately we're all a lot more similar than we are different. We're all just human beings. So with this, I encourage you to reconsider any ideas you might have behind national pride and reflect further on the ever-growing international community that we live within. Open your mind to what the world could grow to be and new ways we could learn to govern ourselves on a more global scale. Because it's only through coming together that the many global issues we all face are actually going to be fully recognized and addressed. Constantly seeing any problem as someone else's through the separatism that nationalism supports is one of the main things that's been holding us back. Try to be open to the interdependency that globalization is creating and less focused on identifying yourself based on your place of origin. And then please do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Tell me, how do you think we could become a world without borders? Or if you don't think so, tell me that as well. This is a social discussion about how we can advance and addressing doubts is a big part of that. So either way, whatever you think, please do share in the comments below. And as always, do join me again next week where I try again to share a little something I've learned in life.